Today I'm going to show you how I unprofessionally repaired this severely damaged fan rocker panel. Using these basic household items. Short strand fiberglass reinforced auto body filler. Partially grenaded cutoff disc. Duct tape or Gorilla tape if you prefer. Old spark plug. And instant rice. We might have also used a MIG welder and some sheet metal and some other tools, but uh, stay tuned and I'll show you what we did. Today we're going to fabricate this lower section underneath the door. I don't know what this is called, I guess it's an uh, auxiliary rocker panel for all of our intents and purposes. Anyways, you can see it's uh, gone away on us quite a bit. Thankfully this side is still somewhat intact. So we're able to get a pattern from it. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is establish how big it needs to be. The way that this is constructed is you can see there's an edge here, it folds in, and then it curves up at 90 degrees, and then it spot welds to the inside of this other panel, this inner sill here. And what I've done is I've cleaned this away and I've inspected this seam here and what I'm looking for is anywhere where the seam has started to pull apart and bubble up in between the spot welds here because that means that it's rusted in between the seam and I would have to remake this entire section here and splice it in at the factory points. See what I'm talking about? Uh, the seam starting to split apart. You can see how that's all split there in between the spot welds. So even though there's not a hole there, I mean, there's a hole here, but there's no hole here, but it doesn't look like a hole, but there's actually rust growing in between there. and It's causing the seam to pull apart. So all of that needs to be replaced. If you have a seam that looks like that, you have to cut it out and start over if you want to get rid of all the rust. So again, you can see here, this is pulling apart. Still appears to be solid, but it's not. So that's the kind of stuff we look for if we're going to be going to a factory seam or not. However, um, it's all still tight all through here. There is no indication of any corrosion between the seam. So we know that this and right out to here is actually still good. So I'm not going to bother replacing any of that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to section it in along this line here, which uh, I don't really like to splice things in on edges, but uh, it does work, so that's what we're going to do. Um, typically, with MIG welding, you can get away with it. If you're TIG welding and you try to splice something in right on an edge, what can happen is it ends up walking around on you and going all wavy, and then your edge isn't consistent, and so it's just not a good time. So, uh, But with MIG welds, you can kind of get away with it. So. Uh, well, that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna cheat and we're gonna get away with it If I was getting really fancy I would just build this whole thing as one piece splice it in at the factory points But there's no real reason to disturb the factory seam and you know It would be kind of a fun challenge like I, I enjoy trying to make things all out of one piece uh, Just for the challenge of it But uh, we're not really trying to challenge ourselves here. We're trying to get things done. So Getting things done means we're going to go right to this seam here, make it as simple as possible. No reason to make it more complicated than it has to be. No reason to replace metal that doesn't need to be replaced. The only modification we're going to do to this is from the factory, there's a Louisiana lap weld where this piece slides underneath this front section here and is lap welded. And it's not even really fully welded. It's just spot welded in here. And uh, that's not really very good. It's kind of ugly. And uh, we're building a custom van, so we don't need to have this seam here anymore. So I'm just going to split it off, butt weld it right to here, and then it'll be totally smooth and flush all the way through. Only thing that's a real question is this kind of corner here. There's not really enough there to kind of establish the exact shape of it. On most of the vans I've seen, this whole area is usually sculpted out of about uh, three gallons of Bondo, which is about uh, 47 and a half liters, or 10 stones worth as the crow flies. So we're just going to kind of use our imagination here and come up with something that kind of looks okay. And, you know, uh, the odds of all this being the same even on a factory 
stamping was probably pretty slim on these vans. These were all just slapped together at the factory anyways, so, you know, there was no real concern with how, how the bottom of a, a rocker panel or whatever looked. So, uh, anyways, what I did here, I started out by making a pattern. Again, I'm just using masking paper from the hardware store. And this is just going to tell me exactly what my dimensions are. You see, I've got my bends here. You can see there's a bend here and then it bends down and then it spot welds the inner. Then I transferred my pattern onto two sheets of 18 gauge sheet metal and I cut it out. And what I'm going to start by doing is I'm going to run this through the English wheel because there's a decent amount of curve here. So I want to put that in first. So I'll run this through the English wheel, get it till starting to curve and then we can move on to the next step after that. Uh, starting to curve both ways so unlike the uh, rocker panels that we built for uh, the sides of the van uh, where we used a uh, rubber band over here uh, these panels under the doors have crowned both ways so that's why we're going metal on metal here even though we are trying to stretch the metal with the English wheel um, there is a last little bit of shape and curve into this that uh, if we try to put it all in with the English wheel, it's going to uh, overstretch the metal, which we don't want to do. So a couple different ways we can help get this curve into here. You can see I already did it on this one. This one's still pretty flat on here. So we do have the right amount of stretch into here, but we need to help that along. So what we could do is we could put the rubber band on the English wheel. Uh, like I did with the other rocker panels and that would help curve that around problem is is it's kind of a pain to put that uh, Rubber band on there and it ends up being a bunch of a uh, big fight. So uh, Instead all I've done is I'm just taking Got a chunk of pipe here, and I'm just folding it over by hand I'm just grabbing it here and here and just pushing down on it and that's just gonna help it along You know, we've already got the right amount of stretch. We've got You know crown to it so we just need to help it get, go in the right direction. Okay, now this bottom section needs to fold and bend in, which we're gonna just put it in the brake for that. Um, and then this is a, kind of a weird thing. It, it folds over like that and goes in and then plug welds to the inner. So, so before I fold this, I'm going to have to do a bunch of shrinking here. And that's just gonna help to start curling this around. Now my shrinking dies are getting pretty worn out, so I may also have to just cut this off, bend this edge up here, and then weld in a strip here, which will give me that curve. But I'm gonna to try to make this all in one piece using the shrinker, so uh, we'll do a bunch of shrinking in this corner, and hopefully that, uh, that helps us out. So I'm just gonna take this, jam it into my uh, shrinker, and start shrinking away.
There's a lot of shrink that has to happen in this corner. I just want to get it started because once it's folded around, I won't be able to shrink it. Or it'll be very hard to get into the dies of the shrinker. So I don't know if you can see, but this corner is starting to dish upwards, which is what we want. So I'm just gonna keep going at this until I feel like I've done enough. And then after that, we'll break this edge. See, I did a whole bunch of shrinking here to get this thing to curve up. So now uh, I've got this line mark here and I'm gonna put it in the break and I'm gonna fold it up to whatever angle it's supposed to be. Well, as you can see, we got both of our lower edges bent, bent this way and then bent this way. And what's happened here is we've gone through the area where we shrunk it and it's created a little bit of a disaster here. You can see that's all piled up now, not looking very happy, but that's okay. Don't be discouraged. Because now I'm going to go back and I'm going to fold this edge with our all 16s and I'm going to bring this whole thing around and then we're going to hammer and dolly it and it'll take this crease out and it'll all go back to flat again in theory. Okay, let me do rocker panels or whatever these are called. I don't know. I did, uh, so I had to go back and tune it up and whatever. And I did have to do a little more shrinking along this edge. But uh, our pre-shrinking worked out pretty well for this corner. I didn't have to, because uh, if that hadn't worked, I would have had to cut this out. And then just put a piece of metal in and then welded it along the seam here. But we were able to make it all in one piece, so that's uh, really good. And uh, now that we got these made, it's pretty simple, didn't take very long at all. Now we have to start rebuilding all this inner nonsense because this is a unibody, so apparently this stuff is important. I don't know. Uh, we got a whole bunch of stuff to reconstruct here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of reconstruct both at the same time, but only cut out the metal one side at a time so that I have a reference point. So I cut out the other side already. But I'm not going to cut this side out until I get the other side welded in and then I'll just keep, you know, going back and forth and reconstructing it piece by piece. So we're going to start with this piece here. Pretty simple piece. It's just a flat piece of metal. It's got two beads in it which are kind of acting as drains. So I uh, cut out two flat pieces of metal. Um, see I got the beads marked out on this one. And this one I already rolled, rolled them through. So uh, pretty simple to make that. I just got the rounded dies in my Eastwood uh, bead roller and uh, just stuff it in there, ram it through and, and that leaves a little trough at the bottom for drainage. 
and uh, I'm gonna get the other side all bead rolled and then I'll get it welded in and we'll uh, we'll go from there. Okay, we got the inner panel all welded in. Because I have to build all of this. Uh, and there's not enough left to actually get a, a really good pattern from. It has to fit to the outer panel pretty pretty close or almost exactly. So there's not a lot of room for error here. I think with a lot of this uh, inner stuff is this isn't a show vehicle, so we're just, you know, we're making it solid. We're not too concerned with historical accuracy here. And, but I do know that some people have requested to see how I'm making the inner. Um, so this is going to be a project where I'll kind of show you uh, what we're going to have to do to make this as simply as possible and just getting it done. This is not going to be a showpiece. While it would be very feasible to make this all in one piece, uh, that would involve either math skills or a whole bunch of test fitting to the outer panel. And uh, I was never very good at math and now's not the time to learn. And I don't wanna have to fit this a whole bunch of times to the outer piece. I wanna get this done, you know, in an efficient way. So we're going to break this down into multiple sections and try to make it as simple as we can and then weld it all together and hopefully it'll it'll fit pretty close to what we need to be. So this is kind of a Frankenstein thing. I'm not going to be real proud of any of this, but uh, it will be solid and it will close off the gap and uh, that's all we're concerned about. So uh, stay tuned and we're going to start butchering. I'm going to start by making this piece which on the other side is completely missing, but it's basically just a 90 degree bend. And then we'll join it to the rest of this panel right here. And we'll just weld that in as a seam. Okay, I uh, bent a piece for each side to uh, 90 degrees there. And I'm gonna cut all this garbage out of here. And then I'm just gonna plug weld it right like that. And that'll be the start of our inner piece. Okay, we got this uh, little angle thingy welded in both sides there. That's all looking happy. And now, uh, now that we got that, what I did, I'm gonna work on this inner edge next. So the plan is to uh, make this uh, bend here, which curves down to the contour of the outer panel. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to make that as one uh, section and then anchor it into here. So kind of do its thing through there. And uh, in order to get the shape into it, I just bent a piece of 18 gauge sheet metal to 90 degrees. And then I'm using my panel as my template and I'm gonna go over to the shrinker stretcher. I'm gonna shrink and stretch and stretch and shrink and and uh, vice versa and uh, shrink some more and uh, just uh, have a real good time and uh, hope that we end up with something that uh, fits inside of here pretty close. Now we're not going for like locked up right tight to this outer edge, but it does fit fairly, fairly tight and it does have to fit close because as you can see right now, it does not fit any which way. On the other side, I took this angle and I basically shrink, shrunk and stretched it all to fit inside this contour here. And then I spliced it in to this piece and I just cut a piece like this. And then if this thing would ever focus, that would be really, really, really nice. Will you please focus? Yes? Okay. And then I just put in a flat piece here and then spliced it into the angle section on the bottom. Uh, well, that ended up being a lot of cruel and unnecessary work. So instead, I'm gonna make this whole piece as one unit that comes right down. And because there's so much curvature going on and there's a lot uh, monkeying around, I'm gonna slice this area off and just bend this flat piece of metal into this corner. And then this piece will come down and just weld right into that angle. 
Uh, if it uh, if you're having trouble following along here, uh, don't be afraid. I'm going to show you, and uh, you'll understand pretty quick the uh, level of butchery we got going on here. Well, we either just uh, saved ourselves a bunch of work or created a whole bunch of work for ourselves. Only time will tell. But you can see, I just cut out up to here, and then I just literally bent this piece by hand. So it kind of roughly fits into there. But if you look at it here, you got all kinds of a gap to fill here. So we're gonna have to do some shrinking and some stretching to get this to flow and sit in here the way it should. Uh, you can see what do we got to do here. Got to do shrink here to get this. And then a whole bunch of shrinking along here to get this to dish in like that. And you know, a little here, a little there, and uh, all usual. So for that, uh, you guessed it, we're using this here machine to get us where we want. So. Okay, I just uh, finished getting this piece very roughed in. I'm not too sure how well the video footage uh, took care of that, but uh, so far things are going a lot faster than the other side did, which is awesome. So let me explain what I did. As you recall, I cut this corner section out and uh, then bent it by hand. And then I used the uh, shrinker to shrink this edge so that it fits nicely there, or at least uh, roughly close to where it needs to be. And then what I did, so I also had to do a little bit of shrinking here to kind of curves around like that. And then that'll fit fairly good. And then this piece was like kicked up like this after I shrunk it. So what I did is I just flattened it back out and then I stretched all through here and then that allowed it to lay back down and I just stretched right along the edge I didn't go too far in because then it might start doing things in the opposite way that I needed so it's still pretty crude right now but we don't want to get it totally like locked in we just want it to fit close to the contours of this which it does so, that... so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get all the bad metal out of here and it all trimmed off so I got all this garbage cut out. Okay, so I clamped our rocker panel piece back on. And I took a journey to the center of the earth. And I took my little screwdriver here. And I scribed this line where the top is. And then I scribed where the bottom is. And that tells me here and here is now I know where to cut this piece to so that it fits where it's supposed to. So I'll clamp this back in and then transfer my scribe line onto here at the bottom, trim it up, and I'll show you how we can get this accurately uh, zapped into, uh, into this uh, gaping hole here. Now I got this abomination clamped back on again and I trimmed this piece back to where it's supposed to be and so uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jam it in here where it needs to go. Uh, get in there, you. Come on. Take my welder and I'm going to tack weld it at each point. So I'm going to tack weld it a few times down there, tack weld it a few times up here. If this will focus, probably not. Nope, it's not going to focus. Yeah, I'll tack it a few times up here as well and just get it all tacky tacked into place so it's all solid and I'll pull the starter piece back off and then uh, burn it in a little more. Well as you can see we got this all uh, tack welded in here. We did a couple uh, seam welds on the edges just to keep it from wobbling around and uh, 
Now we gotta concentrate on patching this in. We're not getting fancy with any of this, so uh, if you came here expecting this to look like a million bucks, well, you're in the wrong place. Just wanna get it structurally sound, get rid of the holes, make it solid. We put our effort into the outside pieces and uh, that'll be good enough. So I just kinda cut, uh, cut a piece out to fit in here. I cut a little big, I haven't trimmed the size. I'm gonna start by uh, tack welding it up here and then I'm just gonna start tacking it down as I go and welding it and whatever and just beating it around and just uh, making it go to whatever shape it's supposed to be. So I'll just uh, set up the camera here and then you guys can uh, watch me struggle for a little bit. Okay, I got this stupid thing all welded in here. You notice I ground down the welds, totally unnecessary for doing this at home. Just knock down any high spots that are going to affect with uh, the outer panel, otherwise, waste of time. Trouble with uh, putting this stuff out on YouTube is you got to kind of tart things up a little bit and you know, do the old smoke and mirrors and what have you, and uh, you know. Otherwise, somebody will complain and then uh, tell you you're doing it all wrong. And so, feel free to tell me how wrong all of this is. You know, I really appreciate that. Anyways, hole's gone. Super solid. That's what we were going for. Next step, I gotta trim all this back, get the outer piece trimmed so I can butt weld it in here. And then, we're gonna prep all this, paint it all, and get it all ready to go. And then, uh, we can blast this whole thing on here and then be done with it. Little tip here if you're not building a show vehicle and you're doing rocker panels or cab corners or something and you've got a single layer inner panel, you've got good access from the backside to get your welder in. I punch all my holes for the plug welds into the inner panel, weld it all from the back, and then I got way less grinding to do on the outside of the panel and I don't bother grinding anything from the back because it's just getting undercoated anyways. So uh, just a little time saving tip there. Uh, this doesn't work out so well on newer vehicles because newer vehicles the inner structure is usually two or three or four or 20 layers all well together so you know on that stuff it's easier just to do your holes from the outside as you conventionally would but uh, on this older stuff it's usually just a single layer so just saves you a bit of grinding and messing around so uh, uh, just something I like to do. On this wheel lip here I am going to have to go from the outside as you can see because I don't have any access to get in here and get a decent weld in there. So, you know, 
but this will save a little bit of time a little bit of grinding and uh, a little cleaner finish at least from the outside don't really care about the inside well the time has come to weld this piece of garbage onto this piece of garbage All right, I got this piece of trash welded on both sides. And uh, some of you may have noticed by now there's a huge giant dent here that I've chosen to conveniently ignore. Uh, that should have been taken care of before we welded any of this in, but we didn't. So the uh, reason for that is it's all closed off from the back, so I got no access there. Uh, which means I got to use the unit spotter on it, which means I got to get this rusted pile of garbage bumper out of the way which means fighting with a bunch of frozen stuck carriage bolts. Uh, so we're gonna deal with that now, so I can fix that, which should have been fixed a long time ago, but we didn't, so do as I say, not as I do. What are the odds that this is gonna be the right size socket for this? Zero. Uh, try next size up here. And that's about as far as we're going to take this, a uh, little putty and a little paint to make it what it ain't and it'll be uh, good enough. So I uh, kind of crudely beat this dent out with the uh, Unispotter and uh, it wasn't anything educational there so I didn't show it. But uh, that's all solid metal now, it's uh, you know, we're gonna, that'll be just fine. Yeah, sure. Don't worry, we didn't forget about this side. I got this all welded in too, so that's all ready to go. Ready for a quarter inch or two inches of Bondo, and uh, that'll really, really clean up. Hey, just wanted to say thanks for watching, and uh, sorry for the lack of videos lately. I gotta get the van finished up here, and uh, getting it finished doesn't involve editing videos, so uh, we're a little far behind on that. But anyways, uh, also, huge thank you to uh, everyone who has subscribed lately. Uh, or is still subscribed or whatever uh, and thanks for continuing to watch this stuff and also thank you to all of our generous patrons for keeping the show on the air so uh, Brian Stout, Chris Feltsky, Mason Hyden, Paul McNair, John Christensen, Cold War Motors, Todd Puzzy, Dave Tallrud, TJP, Dan Tarver, Peter Hampton, Billy Barger, Lou J. Montcalm, Greg Fritchley. Here you go. Thank you guys. Hey, everyone, say thanks to these people. They're awesome. Hey. Leave it alone, you jerk. What are you doing to my wallet? I don't have any money. Hey. Hey.